hello fellow jet planes. This is your captain speaking, Jammer James. You guys can call me the guy who talks about audio too much. Or JJ. And welcome back to episode 3 of Let's Play Maness. It's the show with the crap title. Where we play games that I've played before and we make some new memories. So where are we going, Tess? Uh, Capitol building's in this direction. And we're going to go ahead and speed up here. There are a few uh, runners that I take care of stealthily, but it's kind of boring. So we are on our way to the Capitol building to find these fireflies. We're going to drop, try to attempt to drop off Ellie with her fellow firefly brethren and... What's the female word of brethren? Sisterin? Covenant? Americans? I don't know. Joel, how did you not hear that? Oh, but now you hear it. Yeah, okay. They're coming. I know. Something on your shoe. <laughs> this game is the master of dark comedy sometimes. It's fantastic. So we'll just speed up here. I'm just looting. They are showing us crafting tables and upgrades right now. I don't have, really have any tools. I don't really feel like upgrading anything right now. So let's loot in this. Uh, I believe it's a museum. And this episode goes from 0 to 100, back to you know, about 50, and then 1,000. The last five minutes of this episode are absolutely crazy. They have, uh, it has one of my favorite right, scenes in all of The Last of Us. And of course, well, thankfully we didn't drop anything, you know, on. I'll make my way around. Look, they're here! Test there. Run. Damn noises of the clickers, man. They get me every time. Tess. Now, in the last episode, we encountered a shiv door that had jack and shit in it. This time, I was contemplating whether or not I wanted to open it or not. I'm like, screw it. It's in a place with clickers. It's got to have some good stuff. And, you know, four bullets total. Some cloth and some pills and some uh, gears. Wasn't a half bad door. That door was worth opening. Last door, not at all worth opening. As I go deeper and deeper into this Let's Play, I fall. I, I always forget how much I love this game. This game is fantastic. I am really looking forward to The Last of Us Part 2. I have heard very negative things uh, with this whole leak situation. Now, I'm a person who hasn't sought after any of this information. I, I, I like going into the games fresh. I'm, I'm very... I'm anti-trailer guy. I'll watch original tra like uh, teaser trailers. Because typically they don't hide anything, or sorry, they don't tell uh, everything, but uh, media culture nowadays is pretty much telling the whole story in the trailers. So I, don't, I haven't seen any gameplay of Last of Us Part Two. I have, I definitely haven't uh, looked for any of the, um, the released footage. Uh, and apparently, I, and I haven't even been spoiled the story, because apparently the whole story got released. That's not my scene. I'm not really a big look at the story before it happens guy. Uh, I am planning on 
my first uh, Let's Play on this channel uh, is going to be of The Last of Us Part 2 live commentary, minimal cuts, just because that game means so much to me, and I feel like sharing that with the world is going to be really cool. So we managed to get past some clickers and about this door, and foreshadowing right there. Now Tess actually, spoiler alert, uh, gets bit there. And it's really cool how Naughty Dog uh, changes her character in that moment. But, you see, that's what happens when you go guns blazing without any guns. You get beat in the chest by a walker. So this time, we're going to kite. I am stubborn. I refuse to use any bullets here. That plus on screen is we need to save, uh, I believe it's Ellie. Before, if we don't do that, it's as if we died. Uh, it's a mission fail, we'll go back, right back to the checkpoint. Tess actually comes clutch here. I didn't see three guys come in, and she manages to shoot them off me, thank God. I'm pretty low health here, and I refuse to heal because that uses materials. I also forget that I can use bricks as weapons, so we're gonna go, we're gonna crack some skulls, ladies and gentlemen, make some omelets. And I said it a couple of, I think I said it in the first episode, the environmental kills in this game are absolutely fantastic. Tess says, oh shit, there. She realized what's happened. And the scene at the top of these stairs just goes to show how real this is for Tess now. Uh, she was talking about taking it easy in the last episode, and now Ellie the Savage. I'm getting the Walking Dead Telltale Walking Dead vibes whenever I play the scene. I'm just waiting for Ben to fall down to his death. Everything you hope for. Jury's still out. But man, can't deny that view. The soundtrack in this, this the music, Gustavo, I believe his name is. If I'm, I hope I'm not butchering that. And hey, the way he looks at that, oh, the way Joel looks at his watch there after he talks to Ellie. Foreshadowing, subtleties, such a good story. We're almost done. Stay focused. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Man, and as you can tell, she's definitely bit. And we're gonna do uh, the game does some fast forwarding for us here too. Jumps ahead a bit, uh, but we're gonna go ahead and kick it into overdrive here in a second Drive as we get corner. to the Capitol building. It took us good. two episodes or eh, an episode and ten minutes to get there, but we're finally here. And I'm just checking over my uh, my upgrades. So yeah, on this, this track basically just establishes that Ellie can't swim. That is a game mechanic that we have to look after her for uh, later on. No. No, no, oh, no. Tess's face there. What happens now? What are you doing, Tess? Oh, God. Maybe they, uh... Maybe they had a map, or uh, something to tell us where they were going. How far are we going to take as this? As far as it needs to go. Where was this lab of theirs? Oh, she never said. She only mentioned that it was someplace else. We have light west. rays coming in. What are we doing here? This is not us. What do you know about us? About me. I know that you are smarter than this. Really? Guess what? We're shitty people, Joel. It's been that way for a long time. No, we are survivors. This is our chance. It is over, Tess. Now we tried. Let's just go home. I'm not. I'm not going anywhere. This is my last stop. What? Our luck had to run out sooner or later. You ruin all. No, don't. Don't touch me. Holy shit. She's infected. Come on, Joel. Joel. 
I do like Joel Survival mm -hmm. Instinct there, backing up. The subtlety Shelton. of everything in this game. Oh, Christ. <laughs> Oops. Right? <laughs> Give me your arm. This was three weeks. I was bitten an hour ago, and it's already worse. This is fucking real, Joel. You've got to give this girl to Tommy's. He used to run with this crew. He'll know where to go. No, no, no. That was your crusade. I am not doing that. Yes, you are. Look. There's enough here that you have to feel some sort of obligation to me. So you're I think they were lovers. To Tommy's. I don't I mean, just that scene alone. Here. Damn it. I can buy you some time, but you have to run. I do like how they leave it ambiguous, though. No, no kiss, yes. no There's hug. No way that... I will not turn into one of those things. She told you, Joel. I wouldn't want to turn into one of those things, either. I can save you, Bonnie. No, no, just go! Ah, oh, so sad. Let's fucking go. Ellie. I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean for this. Get a move on. I know it takes away from the scene there a bit, but the reflection of the blood, when you can actually see what's above, it's kind of cool. I can't believe we did that. So well, Ellie, she's dead. We just left her to die. She was going to die anyway. You stay close to me. You have to move. Oh, man. You don't see her die. Just keep but we do hear that. Joel's just a man who loses everything in his life. Sergeant Mitchell took out two of my men. Got me one. And there she is. Check yes. out the door. Yes. It's mine. Yes, sir. There's a theme. I feel like every episode is going to have a duality with the soldiers and with the infected. This first little bit is very soldier heavy. I should move. It's definitely the least preferred enemy. I definitely would rather take out mindless zombies or infected uh, than the soldiers. The soldiers on hard and difficulty are quite difficult. Bullets yeah. are hard to dodge, unlike a fist from a um, from a runner. Uh, but we do get our first long rifle here, the hunting rifle. This game is very good at trickling new weapons in as the game progresses. I, do. I do. Joel. I got this. I love the protection of Ellie that we do. The cover mechanic in this Check game is fantastic. Yeah. Check down the hall. And again, I love how set up this place is for a firefight. Just that video game logic, right? I feel like I'm gonna say in every episode, but that noise gives me gives me goosebumps. The about to be spotted noise. So the thing that's really you gotta watch out. If you notice that little stand uh, next to me wobbled and it fell down. Thankfully, no one heard it because I I do believe I know I know clickers will hear those cool. things. I don't know if I'm pretty sure soldiers do. I don't know if I have proof in this episode that soldiers will hear things that fall over. Here I am trying to save ammunition, obviously. I'm basically I am building up for the last fight. I am trying to save as much ammunition for the last fight. And there's what I mean about bullets being hard to avoid. I'm gonna pop it up to eight. Uh, we're going to try this again. So, again, 
fast forwarded or went to that one guy and they see me. Thank God Joel moved his head. I'm actually very lucky that I managed to um, take that guy out. He had a helmet on, so he would have been hard to take out the bullets anyway. So as I was saying, as I tried to clear out this area, my whole goal in this game, in hardened difficulty, or not hardened, sorry, grounded, is save as much ammunition as I possibly can for the last gunfight. In the finale of this game, I'll, I'll be a little vague just in case there are people out there that don't know too much of the story. There's a big firefight that, in the five playthroughs of this game that I've played, I've never been able to stealth. Stay with me. So I am trying to save as much ammunition as I can for that those firefights. Obviously, if I have to use bullets i will and i did find out i believe on grounded difficulty on the um at least the humans are a little easier to kill they they're, they're a little bit more realistic to kill should i say and we'll just fast forward uh, to the next soldier area over here i find like one bullet to the chest will kill most soldiers which is thank god So I guess that's the give and take about grounded difficulty. Uh, I know I noticed no, no differences with the infected, though. And clickers in the last episode, as you can see, it's like six bullets with the revolver, and you're still, you might, kill them. So here's a perfect example of JJ trying to be stealthy. Yep. Thankfully, managed to get him out of there. Uh, now, I am struggling with what I want to do with light balance uh, here. Obviously, there are some dark areas, but I like leaving those in just so that you can see what I'm seeing. This was petrifying watching. Thank God he turned away. So yeah, I am. Uh, I might correct some, some, make it lighter than it should should be, just so you guys can see for entertainment's sake. But I do like the aspect of you guys fully seeing what I see. So here I am thinking that this is the last guy. So I'm like, all right. Let's go around. And then I hear looking. Yeah, buddy over there saw me. So here's my prime example of me being bad at the game first. I believe I missed a, miss a shot here. Whiff. But yeah, I definitely didn't headshot him. But he did go down. So again, that's my case for me forgetting to have what buttons these. That's my case for what I, th I think grounded difficulty is. Um, I probably should do research on it, but I like you know going into games and playing the games. Again, like I said, these enemies are pretty smart. If you didn't hear, they, he said go around. And he, they, they do try to flank you in this game. They're not dumb. So this area is pretty difficult. The two heavily armored individuals here, you can still take them out with your fists, but with bullets, they have helmets on, it's pretty hard. So I waited their patterns out a bit and tried to take out this guy stealthily. I probably should have brought him around the corner, that probably would have been smart. Because thank God he missed. And this game is all about line of sight. Breaking the line of sight. Thank God he missed it again. Yeah, 
So yeah, I I think I am going to leave the light balance. What you see is what you get for this episode at the very least. I do know there are some night segments uh, later on in the game uh, that do get quite dark. So I might ump up the light balance here. Let me know in the comments if you have any issues with it. And I do manage to use an environmental kill on him after hitting with a brick. And just when you think you're out of the frying pan, they throw you in the oven. I like Joel's look at Ellie here, watch. Oh, my heart. Did you spot him? No, the place is empty. We're going over this way. Go check down there. Ellie, why are you standing up, girl? So yeah, just more establishment that she here. is obviously right. immune to this whole thing. And then there's my gloriousness at stealth. And we'll pop the death counter up to nine. Almost in double digits, ladies and gentlemen. I do manage to take this guy up stealthily, though, the second time. Yay me. I'm pretty sure the fog or this, the spores make it difficult to see because I think any other circumstance he would have seen his buddy's dead body literally right there. But because it's foggy, I'm able to bash his head. Almost fast forward. I'd make some liberties. I am trying to keep all these episodes under 40 minutes. It's about just over an hour of gameplay in each each video. So, uh, basically, this whole scene just establishing that you can swim. And this whole... Uh, I don't want to say a puzzle dynamic. It's not really puzzly. But this whole dynamic of finding a pallet for Ellie to stand on and you get her across a, um, a watery area. Yeah. Cool mechanic. A little tedious sometimes. I think it's the one thing in this game that I think it could use less of. I believe there's five instances where it kind of comes in. It just feels like they're padding for gameplay. But we're going to get into our first conversation with just Ellie here. Hey, look. Um, I love how adult she looks. About Tess. I don't even know. Here's how this thing's going to play out. You don't bring up Tess. Ever. In fact, we just keep our histories to ourselves. Secondly, don't tell anybody about your condition. They either think you're crazy or they'll try to kill you. And lastly, you do what I say when I say it. Yes, sir. We clear? Crystal. Sure. Repeat it. Ooh. What you say goes. Good. I always forget how much of a jackass Joel, Joel is at the start of these, um, a few miles north of here, in the, in the first couple hours of this game. Favors. Good chance he could get us a car. Okay. Let's get a move on. Let's get a move on. I just love how southern he is. <laughs> so yeah, we get our first legitimate scene change. I mean, obviously prologue to current day was I guess one but we go from uh, the busy city area to this foresty city area this forest is absolutely beautiful but for time I am going to fast forward here you mean the woods yeah when I walk through the woods you and Ellie have some conversations with with her just kind of about how kind of sheltered she's been 
she actually has shares a few moments of, you know, being a kid. I mean, she's 14. Like, for example, over here, while we're looking for the for something, uh, she sees fireflies, actual fireflies, and she just gets lost in the moment. She even says, sorry about that. I think I lost myself there. I mean, she's a kid. And this game does a very good job of kind of letting you forget that she's a 14-year-old. But then subtly reminding you through her getting lost in fireflies, her trying to whistle while you're searching, and, not, and she can't. She really hasn't had any fatherly, motherly figures. Again, the dynamic between these two, Ellie, who kind of desperately wants Joel to, especially later on in the game, to love her, and Joel not wanting to make room in his heart for uh, another loss. But eventually, Ellie gets in there. And this is kind of our first example of Joel letting Ellie help. And like all things, it all starts off really subtly. But just a simple over the top. And that just genuine thank you. So, welcome to uh, this this new so scene change. Get a car from this buddy of yours. Then what? Well, then we go find and the whole function of this is we need a car. We need to go see Tommy. Now we explore the city a bit here. In a bit, I'm gonna fast okay. forward. It's just exploration. But there are a few moments hey, that you share with Ellie, so I'm gonna keep one of them in here. Yeah, those are gnomes. Man, I had an art book filled with them. I always thought they were super cute. <laughs> yeah. Again, there's just a handful of moments in the city that you kind of get reminded that Ellie is a kid. Uh, she swoons over a video game here that she wishes she could play. She was born in the apocalypse. She's a she's a child of the infection. It's, you know, a thing that's really easy to forget. Joel forgets it. Obviously, the game lets you forget it. But we're gonna get into a little bit of the nitty gritty Jeez. here. I love how she says, whoa, Nelly, and then says, hell. Friend a bit paranoid, maybe? Yeah, that's putting it lightly. But this is, this is Bill's What's city. Well, he helped us smuggle stuff into the city. He knows how to find things. Well, let's hope we don't blow up trying to find him. Just watch your step. You'll be fine. But, yeah, he's very, he's a very paranoid person. He's quite the character when we meet him. We grab some arrows and right around here is a bow. We finally have our bow. Uh, these thing this is great for taking out clickers. I thought we just leave this kind of stuff. I just love how adamant Joel is of not giving Ellie a weapon. I don't think so. <laughs> Again, the the physics of the the boards is forgivable. It's one of the only few things that they uh but just how uh easy it is for him to whip it. And there you go. One shot and it is silent. Uh I'm pretty sure even if I was in a, a pack full of now, listen, clickers they wouldn't hear a thing Bill ain't exactly the most stable of individuals so when we get there you let me do the talking you understand 
right, then. We gotta be clear on this. You, you don't take too kindly to strangers. That's very true. All right. Bill's a good guy. He just. Bill's a good guy. He'll just set up bombs. He's not a terrorist. He's just paranoid. See that wire? Stay underneath it, okay? Just keep your head low and you'll be fine. Alright. So, there is a little side thing over here at the door. On other difficulties, there is a lot of stuff. Good stuff in here. But basically, on this difficulty, it's just some pills. But we use bottles to get through things. There's one way to do it. I hate when games give you weapons, or sorry, ammunition, and more so than they usually do. Because you know what's going to happen. You know what lies around that corner or behind that door when games give you more ammo than they ever have. I mean, just think about it for a second. I got four bullets from my revolver there. Okay. Not bad. And in this doorway, in this drawer, I get four more. Now, what lies behind this door is one of my favorite scenes. Yep. <laughs> uh, I say scenes more like uh, more like gameplay mechanics. We are now upside down, like a bunny. There, that fridge. It looks like that's a counterweight. Okay. I do like how this isn't sprung on us. <laughs> See what it is? Sprung Cut like a rope. Sorry. Uh, on it. I mean, Bill's paranoid. We've established this. Bill's been setting bombs, traps around everywhere. This isn't unlike Bill. But because of loud noises, we now have to defend ourselves while we're hanging upside down. I'm also a bad shot. Instantly. Tenth death, double digits. Second try. I can't shoot. Let's make it 11, ladies and gentlemen. Third try. Can he kill him? He does. Look at that. Yeah, that's kind of embarrassing. <laughs> Five deaths in one episode. Oh well. It is very disorienting shooting upside down. Well, things are coming at you right side up. And this clicker, I'm actually quite proud with how I handled that clicker. I didn't have to reload once. But the rule of games and the rule of escalation. We get lifted a little higher. So we're out of harm's way, but now we need to protect Ellie. Here's some ammo. Ellie, why were you holding ammo? You don't have a gun. I'm quite proud of how I handled those clickers. Those two clickers. And then Ellie just manages to get off. Thank God. But like everything in this game, out of the frying pan, into the oven. Thanks, Bill. Ladies and gentlemen, here's Bill. He's quite the character. So where are we gonna go back here? I 
I do end up having a brain fart here. I forgot that I have a lead pipe with me, and those things can take out clickers. Any melee and stuff, but I end up shooting him twice, which wasn't the smartest idea. But it did save a couple of beatings. I only had to hit him twice. Bill said clear him out, so we're going to go ahead and swing for the fences. Go, Ellie. Why do people always look so weird at Ellie with their masks? It's funny. Uh, Ellie. Hey, what are you doing? Joel? Bill. What are you doing? Bill? Turn around and get on your knees. Just calm down a second. Turn around All right. and get on your knees. Don't test me. Just Paranoid. Take it easy. Fight? Oh. I like how much of a fighter Ellie is, though. God damn it, I'm clean. Not to see so much as a trick. Ow! Stop! Son of a bitch! <laughs> Am I done? You come into my house. You set off all my traps. You damn near break my shoot. Not arm. a shooting arm. Who the fuck is this punk and what's she doing here? I am none of your goddamn business. And we're here because you owe Joel some favors. Oh. And you can start by taking these off. I owe Joel some favors. Is some kind of joke? <laughs> I, I love it. Ellie. It is a joke. Joel needs a car. Well, if I had one that works, which I sure as hell don't. What makes you think I'd just give it to you? Huh? Yeah, sure, Joel. Go ahead. Take my car. Take all my food, too, while you're at it. By the looks of it, you could lose some of that food. Boom Listen roasted. Me, you little shit. No, fuck you. You handcuffed I me. need you to shut up. <laughs> all right. Again, dark humor. Whatever favors you think I owe you ain't worth that much. Actually, Bill, they are. I don't think we ever learned what favor well, it don't Joel matter, I don't have a car that works. did for Maybe Bill that owes him this much. Parts. There are parts in this town. Meaning that you could fix one up. All right. I'm going to do this. There's some gear I'm going to need. All right. It's on the other side of town. Now you help me go gather it. And maybe I can put something together that runs. But after this, I owe you nothing. That's fine. A couple of days from now, we'll probably be dead anyway. Good. Follow me. That's mean, Bill. Whole goddamn town's booby trapped. Best stay right on my ass. Can't miss it. Boom roasted. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is where we're gonna leave episode three. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. But as always, be safe, stay safe, and wash your hands. And I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Bye. Boom. Clap. Boom-de-clap-clap, clap. wash your hands and like and subscribe, boom.